I'm James Turk. I'm a director of the Gold Money Foundation. I'm here with Ned Naylor Leyland, who's just given a wonderful presentation at the GATA conference here in London, England. Ned, can you share with our viewers a little bit of what you were talking about this morning? Of course, James, yeah. Um, it's all to do with a new exchange which has just opened in, uh, in China. I mean, actually, I'll just hold back on that. It's not open, it's not open fully, but they are rolling it out as we speak. Um, uh, it's called the Pan-Asia Gold Exchange, and it's based in Kuming City in the Yunnan province, and it's part of China's um, 12th five-year plan. So it's absolutely a formally central government-backed project. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very interesting that it's flown way under the radar of the, um, the gold community. I would say even actually the gold bug community, um, possibly due to the maybe the uh, well lack of uh, interest amongst um, Western uh, media to follow up on the story, but also partly just because it's a Chinese initiative and it's being dealt with in Chinese. And unless you happen to come across the, the subject, you won't know anything about it. But there's been a little bit of coverage on the internet. And um, Andrew McGuire, who's a good friend of mine, um, commented on one of the two contracts that they are rolling out. But actually, I've, one of the reasons I wanted to speak at the conference is because um, the market has, or, or rather the, the internet has focused on the part of the story which I think is the less interesting part of the story rather than the really important bit. So just to, to back up quickly, the, the bit that people sort of do know about is that, that, that Page are already running a 10 ounce mini contract for the re domestic retail market. 10 ounce gold contract. That's right. Now bear in mind at the moment your, your average retail Chinese investor can buy physical. Yes. Or he can go uh, and set up an account with a brokerage firm and trade futures. But of course, that's quite complicated. That's not a, a simple process. That means that that narrows down the, um, the potential scale quite dramatically. And what this, this 10 ounce mini contract does is allow all the customers initially of the Agricultural Bank of China, which is 200 odd million um, Chinese uh, customers who can potentially can, can, can buy and sell these contracts straight through their computer linked to their bank account with the um, Agricultural Bank of China. And clearly that is a big amount of physical should you know, a small proportion of them use this facility. That's going to be a big drawdown on the physical market. But I don't think that's really where the action is, James. I think it's interesting and I think it's very important and they'll do it in silver as well. But the real beef with Page is to do with um, the other contract, which is an international facing spot contract. Um, and as you know, the spot market is where the real weight of money is in, in gold and silver. And when we talk about price discovery, we tend to talk a lot about COMEX and the futures market. But actually, in truth, that's a uh, much smaller by scale component of the global gold price discovery mechanism. And the way I described it at the conference is that we've talked before about this futures market wagging the spot dog. In other words, that rather than the, 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 the spot market leading to behavior in the futures market, the futures market is the thing that controls. In, in other words, the, the paper market drives the physical market rather than the way it really should be is the physical market is the basis for which the, base, the paper market price, uh, prices itself off of. That's right. That's right. Now, I must also um, point out that this, a lot of my understanding of this now has come from, from Andrew McGuire because, you know, I needed to teach. It's actually quite technical, as you know. It's not a very, very simple subject. But, um, but I think it's important to try and help gold investors to understand what is it that creates the price and, and where are we going with that. And this is what I'm about to explain is, is genuinely changing right now, James, is, is that you have, in truth, yes, the tail wags the dog, but, but the reason why it does that is because actually there's someone holding the tail. Someone is wiggling the dog by, by holding the tail. And of course, those, that's the banks. They're mm -hmm. holding the tail, and they're wiggling the spot dog using the futures market, i.e. they yeah. are moving the price using the futures market. Now, that, that, that being the case, you know, that, that's fine. But in truth, the really important point is that the dog itself, the spot market, the beast, the big deal, is compliant in being wiggled. In other words, it's quite happy to be wiggled because, of course, the spot market is also the banks. Yeah. So you've got banks, futures market, banks. Yeah. So, of course, the banks are very happy to allow themselves to be wiggled around by the, the futures market because it suits purpose. Now, that system has been a monopoly, and we've all, because we've been looking at this for so long, kind of slightly gone to sleep about that and thought, well, that's just the way it is. You know, that's why the way the price is created. We need to uh, generate in investment demand to try and 
impact that price discovery mechanism. But the page exchange is going to do it for us because they are launching in Q4, and it might even be Q3, a 90-day spot rolling contract denominated in RMB uh, for international investors. And that contract is one for one allocated.